payable, accounts receivable. Okay. So you'll have to first identify it because you cannot become a master of all the domains. Right. Like if you look at me, I, I, I have explicitly worked on healthcare. I have worked on uh, mortgage, financial. This is my area of expertise. But it doesn't mean ki I, I can't work in any other domain. I can, but I'm not as good in that domain. Somebody has to tell me ki what this data is all about. Likewise, you can also choose which is your areas of interest. Are you really good in uh, finance, retail, healthcare? But end of the day, it's a data. Now, if you look at this retail data, I know that uh, this particular sheet has all the data of sales, profit, and discount, which is stored at order ID. So the level of dimensions is very important. Whenever you look at data, you should identify what is level of dimension. Level of dimension is nothing but what is the lowest level of your data. Lowest level means, example, in a company, uh, let's say there is a company called Microsoft. We have employee ID, we have employee name, we have department, and for that department, we have a business unit. A business unit ke upar we have country because employees can be in India, United States, can be different country. Now, if you ask me which is the highest level of dimension, country means at the top is country. Inside country, you have state, you have city, you have business unit. Inside that, you have department. What is the lowest level? Employee. Employee. In this, if you want to know the raw level information, what is there? It's employee. Okay. Now, in this data set, the lowest level of dimension is order ID. Further, we cannot drill down. After order ID, we don't have anything else to further drill it down. And what is the highest level of dimension? The highest level could be uh, country, state, right? It rolls up. So that business thing will anyways, uh, you know, tell you. But in, this, in our scenario, country is going to be our highest level of dimension. Okay. So now you got some basics of data, what kind of data you have, what kind of columns you have. And from our previous version of Excel training, you know how to categorize dimension and measure, right? So in this entire set, we know that these are measures. And all these are going to be our dimension. Okay. Now the third step is, what is that you want to create out of this? I said in the beginning of our session that we have to create a dashboard. Right. We have to create, what is the dashboard? It's a collection of information, collection of charts, collection of KPIs. Now, whenever you create a dashboard, you need to focus on who is the target audience. The target audience generally will be two types of people. First one is CXO. Anybody know what is CXO? No, I said CXO. <laughs> Not CEO. CXO. Yeah. So CXO can be not, is nothing but simple. These guys are leadership people. There will be like chief, like you said, chief. Uh, I'll just write CEO platform. CEO. CEO. CMO. CPO. CFO. Whatever it is, stands with C. Okay. Now, if you talk to these people, these guys are like, you know, top shot guys, right? Why do they want to see at order ID level what is happening? He is a leadership guy. His responsibility is to just give a direction to his company, right? Sure. He, he's just decided and say, we are doing sales of $1 million. Next year, I want $2 million. This is, he'll just come and say that, right? Now, are we achieving $2 million? He doesn't want to go and say, at sales executive level, are, are we going to, uh, are we achieving the target? No, we'll just look at probably at country level. I gave a target of 2 million. Which country is meeting? Which country is not meeting? If that country is not meeting, there would be one country head. We'll go and get in touch with that. Level. That country head will be now knowing about in that country what segments he is taking care of. So that is a sales head guy, right? So you have to understand the target audience whenever you are building a dashboard. Target audience can be very different, starting from leadership to uh, business uh, leads, managers, executives. Executives is example, sales representative. Now sales representative, why does he want to see what is happening at country level? Sales executive will see at my, uh, as me as an executive, in this month, how many sales I have done? What is the incentive I'm getting? What kind of products I have sold? So I'm interested more about myself. I don't care what is happening at country level or what is happening at segment level, right? So there are two types of people here. 
whenever you created i would always ask your end users or the requirement executives whoever you work with are we building this for uh, some leadership or we are building this for some business process or such sometimes it will be combination of both yes you are building for both people okay when you say building for both people then one dashboard one specific tab is only for executive one tab is only for the lower level of executive okay both are two different okay so now we know the target audience of it now the last part which is pending is what kind of insights you can represent so you'll have to study this data i'll give you some requirements along with me as i i'll show you you can also practice it with now uh, what i'm trying to show is i'll first build a cxo level of a dashboard which will basically tell you at overall level what are the total number of orders we have what are the total sales we did what is the profit what is the average discount these are my top kpis and after that i will show for last 12 months how my orders are are my orders are increasing decreasing if my orders are uh, you know profit is decreasing or not similarly discount and other measures so please note i am using some time here right if i want to show for last 12 months i need some date some time is needed so you can refer there are two dates here order date right we have order date and we have shipment date so, so we'll be using these fields so whenever we work with these two fields if i want to know uh, which year or which month this data belongs to how do we extract because this is currently a date field right it has date month year and all of that but we want only extract year and month and store it in some column how do we extract it store go ahead and add two columns yeah. first we'll give it as order year second we'll call it as order month if i want to extract we learned about functions date function is equal to year of order date i got my order change the format what is it showing in date format maybe you need to change okay i change it to general now i got my year similarly i want to extract month <coughs> i'll use month function Can you go ahead and create these two columns? okay so i'm using uh, there's a function called text from uh, month date field i'm extracting month name i don't want month number i want it should be like january february and all of that so i'm using text function once you're done go ahead and drag the formula and once you are done do the same thing for shipment date order date is when the order is placed shipment is where when the shipment was placed so we can show some insights on shipment right Need to. Which one? Ah. We are using a, a text function. 
we are calling C2. C2 is where the date is. What kind of value you want to expect? Triple M means month name. Double M means it will print month number. Triple M means it will print the three letters of the month. Done, no? Everybody? It's just to do the same. Did you type is equal to? Yeah, yeah. Equals to text, CP, comma, and then equals to that. Okay. And you just click on it and press enter. Go ahead and change the format to general. In the this thing, select the cell and select general. Then you should see something. It's now working. Once it is working, just double click and drag that formula for all the cells. <coughs> okay. Once we are done with that, Go ahead to the last column where do we, uh, wherever we have measures. Uh, we don't want any decimals, okay? Except discount column. All the other, we want to remove decimals. How do we remove it? How do we remove? Round function. Round of that sales amount, comma zero. I don't need any decimals, so it will become 33. Do it same for quantity also. I guess quantity don't need. Uh, already it's in uh, integer. Do it for profit. Give the column name as profit round. <laughs> so these are all called as calculated fields. So what we are doing, there are some already built-in uh, columns in Excel. We are creating some calculations. Enough. Shall we move to the next one? Add one more column uh, wherever you have added order year, order month. Give it as order week. How do you get the week number? Week is a built-in function called week number. Okay. Now, one of the catches, I just don't want W3, uh, sorry, 43. I want WK-43. I want the letter WK also to be attached to this. How do we do it? I, I want this like this. Instead of showing 43, I want to show it like WK-43. Concatenate. Go ahead and apply concatenate function.
and once you're done do it same thing for shipment also shipment date no need to rewrite the form yeah. copy paste automatically formula is taking g2 no need to change anything copy paste The week number of the month, right? Ah, yeah. No, no, the week number of the year. So you figure that is equal to week number. बनना It's done. Huh? So we move to the next one. So far, whatever columns uh, calculations we wanted, we added that. As we, if we need more, we'll come back and add it. So this is how we can add custom columns with some formulas. Now let's go ahead and create a formulas for all our reports. Okay, go ahead and clear, create a new sheet, and you call that as formulas, or you can call also call it as a report. Create one column called week, add all the weeks, starting from week one to week 53. And what we want to know is total number of orders. Total quantity. Total profit. Then what else we want? Average discount. So we want all these numbers for each week. Uh, just drag it till rows 53. Uh, when you drag it, it will automatically add. Uh, that is increment only. Like this, if you drag. Just give number until 53. Uh, there is one. Uh, yeah. In order to go there, and you have to give the number. Mention. See the number how much uh, how much more hundred. Because I want ten thousand, I can't give value ten thousand. Bottom is one, top is fifty three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can do that also, but the option which you are saying, I don't know. I have never seen. <laughs> Even I'm not getting that option in real size. Stop. In real size. It is there also. 
all shortcuts <laughs> so many shortcuts are there. after attending this class when i start attending this class i saw fortunate because it was getting too confused there are some people See, I mean, there's no nothing to you know stop it. We can learn it as long as you have some base knowledge on SQL. On top of that, you are learning from Reels and all. That's good. But if you don't know some of the basic features of Excel and if you are learning some 30 seconds Reels about how to drag and all, incomplete information. So have some, now I think you have basic information, right? You know about pivot tables, formulas, charts. Now, how do we calculate the total orders? So for week one, I want to go ahead and find out what are the total number of orders. We look up. We look up. We want to count number of orders. We learned about we learned about count if s function s is nothing but we can pass multiple conditions, right? So first criteria range. So we have to go to the sheet, wherever we have order week, just select this entire week. Lock the cell is equal to week one, because we want only week one kind of information. No? We don't want all the one, all the weeks. So that is equal to, we are saying A2, remove this, A2. Order now once you're done, just double click. Please go ahead and validate the numbers. Is it true? Hmm. First thing is, where is the week? Uh, just select that column, entire column. Okay. Comma. Press F4, no? Oh, you selected full column, no? So you don't have to select full column. Just select 10,000 only record. No? Control shift down. Now you can lock it, F4. No, you press function button and then press it for comma. Go to that sheet where your formula sheet is there, sheet one. Select A2. Ah, that's it. Because you want so you give week uh, one is it? Uh, close the bracket, no. Found details. No, remove that first area colon here. In this formula, this part we don't need. This so we don't need them. Now we have Is it open? Press enter. Now it says. Is it uh, is anyone getting a forty as the answer? Go to the sheet. <laughs> no, we didn't go. This is not work. Function. Comma. Because this will anyway not work. Here you have given weak space one, and in your data it is W2. So you need to make sure both are seen. What is W two is in the whole picture? W two. 
It's working. Working for you, Anita. Do it for all others. Is there any better way to write this formula? Huh? No. Uh. <laughs> no name manager you can use, right? In this entire thing, you call it as so it will simplify your job, no? Well, I have saved it in this sheet in name manager. I'll open some other report. And I if I go to that, it is it is this. Now if I want to now what is happening is 40 it is counting, right? Which year 40? Is it 2023, 2022? So save the WK1. Uh, WK1 can be in 22 also, no? In 23 also, 2020 also. So, if you go and verify, uh, put a filter for week 40. Uh, I did that. How many records are getting? Uh, first one I checked. Uh, sorry, put a filter for week 1. You will see answer is 40. But go to order year filter, you will see 2020, 2021, 2020. I want only for 2023. How to do it? Throughout our Excel session, today's is a very engaging session. Everyone is now <laughs> fully interactive. Hi, yeah, Meghna is on night shift. She has already attended Excel session. She wanted yeah. some uh, formula. She wanted VLOOKUP. That's why she took another session. Another session for VLOOKUP. Another session. Another time she repeated that. She has, uh, actually, she is having something, uh, some personal issue. She don't want to start SQL. She said she will start in November. So. Yeah. It's working, huh? Everyone? Yeah. It's working. Now, answer it is showing week one is 40. Right? You go to your uh, order sheet, put a filter for order week, and select only week one. And answer is 40 there also. Okay. Then we have a column called order year. And if you filter order year, it will show this number is 40 is for all the number, all the years, 2020, 2021, 2023. Because week one is available in all three years. So it has taken 40. But I want this number only for 2023. 2023 week one. Now it is calculating for all years. I want the total number of orders for week one, 2023. Again, add one more condition, comma. County face is what? You can pass as many condition as you want. Go to your order sheet. Select the entire order year. Lock the cell. And give 2023. Order year. Yeah.
No, but it's not working for some reason. I don't know. That's okay. We'll move to the next uh, one. Total quantity. Same total order, whatever we counted. We want to count total number of uh, quantity. Okay. So here, instead of using count if, you should use sum if. Because we want to sum the total number of quantities. Same formula. Sum if s. Yes. Answer should be 172. No.
first thing is sum if s select the column where it is quantity column x select the entire column x the values comma orders data may you have week number where is in week number column f select the entire column f comma okay no no x first is x which is quantity and then it is here. What happened? Quantity first is quantity, right? Ah, go and select quantity. And once you selected quantity, then give comma. Below you can also see, right? It says range. Whenever you write sum is formula, it's saying first is sum range. Where is that information? Then I get criteria. Criteria range is first column, which is order week. Go select order week, which is F, column F. Comma. A2. Not coming up. Why it's not coming? What is the error you are getting? Show me the formula. I'll I'll create the formula in the chat box. You want to write from scratch. What is the error you're getting? Maybe you missed comma. Spill. Error is spill. Show to me. Again, all the You're trying to practice. Some if you're using. Some if yes. Function name is wrong. Just add yes. Working, huh? You should see the answers like this, okay? One seventy-two. Ah, what is that? Home, then fill, Okay, and you have option to spell it. Columns, Good. Working up. Those who have done, go ahead and do the same thing for profit. Yeah. Only if change in your formula is instead of X, uh, okay. instead of X, it will be Z. Same formula, copy inside the formula bar. Wherever it is X, replace it with Z. Answer should be minus 131 for the first record. Total profit we are calculating. Uh, same function. Now instead of X, the column is Z here because profit is column Z. You are saying sum if for sum if is. Did you copy the formula like this? Huh. Last, is it A2 or B2? 
A2. What you have done is, I am telling you, right? You don't have to control C and control V. Go inside the formula bar and pop it. Don't drag the formula. Once you're done, go ahead and you apply it for average discount. Instead of summary phase, it will be average phase. And uh, can somebody tell me what is the column for discount? Is it uh, Y? Discount Y. Yeah. The change is only Y. Answer should be 0 0.295. Hmm? Hmm. Instead of using Z, we can use AB, right? Because Z is a decimal value. Make it AB. For profit, instead of Z, use it AB because we want rounded number. Please use AB. No change, only thing is decimal values. Okay. Is there any other best way to arrive at this number? Instead of writing all these formulas manually, is there any other way we can think of? Pivot huh? table, friend. So if you are feeling a difficulty, you can go ahead and use pivot tables. Okay, I'll show you a quick example. Select all the data. Click on insert, pivot table. <clears throat> Order date, drag it to rows shelf. Remove years, quarter, month, all of that. Right click. There's an option called group. Number of days into seven. Now you want sales, right? Drag sales, profit, and discount. Now discount it will show as sum, change it to average. We have not added order ID. Just go ahead and add order ID also. The brand is in profit sales and all of that. Profit round, we use it. We want all round values. Use profit round, sales round because we want uh, round values. We don't want decimals of them. And drag order ID. Automatically, it will show count of order ID. There is a column called order ID. Just drag order ID to value shell. It will show you count of order ready. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Correct, correct. And those of you who don't know how to add week numbers, you just add at month level. That is fine. 
you should show at least something like this. Remove remove years from your road shelf and add month. Here we will not remove some. Remove years and quarter. Yeah. Once you are done with it, rename the columns like orders, sales, profit, AVG discount items, or you just say discount. That's fine. If you are not able to rename columns, if it throws error, give space, space, sales, space, and hit enter, it will take. Order ID is not there. Huh? Instead of order ID, give it as orders. Just drag order date to row shell. Remove year, quarter, and put only month. Just put month. Yeah. Uh, discount. Discount, just drag discount and change it to average. You have to remove order here. Blank, it's here, you know. You select it. Because I've selected the entire sheet. Ah, no, you should not make that. You should select only 10,000. I can just add it. Yeah. I mean, leave it that is fine. Then, no? Diwali, Diwali, deliver it. Which is easy, writing formulas or paper table? See what's up. Uh, that's why profit space enter it will be just add one space Can you go ahead and create one chart like this? I need to have one. Bar chart. No, it just shows a lot of things. No, no, you don't have to select that option. You have to create from scratch. And we learned about creating chart from scratch, right? Yeah. So you can go to insert. Maybe uh, those who don't know how to create chart, please uh, take a look at the screen. How to create charts from scratch. You know, I want a bar chart. I will go to bar, select this first option bar, okay? 
Now right click, there is an option called select data. The first thing it will ask you is series. Where is that uh, Y axis you want? Series name is orders. Series values is all the values of orders. Yeah. I'll just show it to you. Yeah. Right click, select data. First thing is we need to add series measure, right? Add. If you click, first thing it will ask series name. Uh, click, uh, select the first one. Right click, select data. Uh, add series. Huh? Series name is order. Series values. Remove that is equal to whatever is there. Select that 404 till 1470 December. Click on OK. No, that you have what you have done is recommended chart to go on. You have to create from scratch. Recommended chart. That man, that's why if you go recommended that you can't remove. That's why I'm saying you have to create from scratch. I'll show you now. See, go to I insert. Can't you can't. Just delete that object, I'm saying. Delete that chart. You create it from scratch. Okay. Your chart should look like this here. No matter how you create it, I'm okay. Basically, on x axis, all the months. Uh, right click. Still, it is going to be the same. Right, I'll select it. Here, edit uh, the labels. Select all the numbers. Then, to December. I'm I can't remember. Uh, how you have created this? Yeah, here you have. This? Uh, no. What you are doing is you are going to insert and you are clicking here. Huh? Uh -huh. No, that's what I'm saying. You should not do that. You should go here. Oh, like that. No, you should click on blank. Insert blank chart. Okay. This is a okay. blank chart we are creating from scratch. Right click. No. We learned about this series labels and all. No? First thing is that y axis may what you want. I want orders. That is the name. Series name is orders. Values may. I want this. Okay. Now all the names are showing one, two, three, four. I'll edit. I'll select these names. These are my labels on x axis. so we need to add the data to this chart. Mm -hmm. so I want this on the series name is those who have done can you assign some color for each month automatically not manually Automatically, uh, I told you, you know, vary by color point. Vary by color point. 
Make sure your chart looks like this. You have to assign one color. Sorry. Uh, okay, so what you do is right click, uh, click on any that bars, wherever there is bar, no? right click, format, format data series. Then go to that extreme left option, expand fill, vary by color, color by point, that's it. Can somebody tell me highest orders which we have, where we have received? Highest order. November. November and December, right? Yes, sir. Right click on any bar. See, I'll show you that. Right click on. No, no. Uh, just right click here. Format data series. You'll see this option. Now I click here. Vary colors by point. No, you have it somewhere. You should see it by now. You have, you have to, all you have to do is you click on any one of the bar, right click and format data series. Reduce, you, you have option no, that uh, size gap to reduce. I have set it to 20. It's here. Yeah. Ah, that one. Got it, huh? No, you have to click on the bar and then format it. Uh, now you got it. Set it to 20, Which one? 24% below. Below. 24%. End up. Okay, done, huh? Those who have done it, go ahead and add data labels. Just click on plus. Add data labels. I'm oh, sorry, no data labels. Huh? No, after data labels, we'll drag that one person into those numbers. Let these people also come along. Huh? <coughs> not it. Huh? What is happening? No, you are not having Excel. Yes, because you have selected whole speech and you can only select the account at that point. That's the reason. Thank 
this is done. Second is major reflex. In front of insert, you don't have to click here. Click on some blank space. Insert. Now, this is any other blank part. You can drag data, right click. Select data. First, you need to add number of objects. Click here. It's saying what is the name? Name means everything to the values to remove this. And select all the Labels I want month name, so I select month name. We got all right here, looking in the bank. Second, you need to assign a color. Right click on the bar for my data fields. Fill it. Very colorful. For the color for bank. Then you need to add data labels. Just click on this. Add data. So if you want to go to go and uh, middle you want to get a clip format. So it is increase the width of this yeah. so format the actually. Now the color and my color is you can see white now. So I want white color to change the I want the reverse direction. You can This is how we can first create a chart. Now we are seeing all the 12 months of data, but we don't know for which year. We know it is January to December, but we don't know which year. So we can go ahead and add a filter to our pivot table. Maybe first you see it, then you replicate it. This is your pivot table. In the filter shelf, you have to drag order year you will see this option, then select 2023. You will see all the numbers are now filtering for Because you have selected grand total also. That's why grand total the length is very big. Go ahead and change your values wherever you want. Like say 2022, your chart should say 2022. If I say 21, your filter chart is getting changed automatically. Change it to 2020. Add it in pivot table here, yeah, order here. Right click on pivot table. No, no, not chart, pivot table. Ah, now you add order here in the filter cell. <coughs> okay. Make sure you when you change, numbers should also change in your chart, okay? You can remove the brand to the no? right here. Select data. The left one, left one edit. Yes, edit. 
Now here remove that uh, the 16 and put this way. Click on okay. Now change your filters, your number should also change. I don't know why it's coming bots. Bots? Yeah, but... I added some bots. Bots are happy. It's okay. Fancy, no? How did you add bots? Okay. Ah, uh, you added the shapes to put a little little seconds. Not there. Uh, Why it looks same for you? It is, uh, you haven't increased the decrease the gap width. Now I have to practice, okay? Whatever this this is already taught in our chart session. If you look at it, we have spent how much? One hour, no? We started at 12 30. It's now two o'clock. <laughs> By now, we should have created a dashboard actually. Okay, we'll take a break. Uh, else, you'll feel exhausted. Please take a break for five minutes. We'll be back after five minutes. Hmm? Hmm. In charge. How to set that those numbers to not be that part? Right click, format data labels inside end. Hmm. Hmm. Include including the filters you need to copy. Values will be orders. Remove all other stuff. Already decided, no, just remove them. Drag orders to. Okay, done now. Pivot is ready. Now we need to create a donut chart. So we don't have to now create from scratch. Just click anywhere on your pivot table and go to pivot table analyze. And then there will be an option called pivot chart. This one. You'll get one menu, like all these types of charts. You should upgrade, upgrade. Sir, it's asking for 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 new ID for ID. No, you have track version of Excel, no. Why you? So Which will I get that? Google. Just type Excel crack version. Okay. When you when you get a chart, go to pie chart and select the last option donut. Add data labels. Increase the size of data labels. And uh, double click on total and you say as orders by equipment mode. Which one? Just go to home and increase the size. Yeah. 
No need to modify that job. Just keep cancelling. Already added, no? What you want? Data levels, huh? Right click on that uh, circle. Any circle, add data levels, bottom. That's it. <laughs> See, so far what I'm doing is, I know what chat I want to create, I'm just guiding you. But when you work, you need to decide, okay, which chart you want and all that things. Which is the right dimension. Increase the size. Hmm? Don't uh, do any uh, you, you know in this what is that formatting related we are not doing like increase size decrease we'll do later now we are creating charts okay shall we go to the next one now same information we want to show by subcategory wise right now we are showing total order by shipment mode right all you have to do is again copy paste this pivot table in row shelf you remove shipment mode and add that subcategory that's it. Okay. Subcategory will just be added. Once it is done, again add one more chart. What is the best chart in this scenario? Word and add bar chart. No, click on pivot again. Exam same pivot chart. Select the first one. Same size, height, width, and same thing. You can do it. Column chart also same, but it will become like horizontal. That's it. Uh, vertical work. This is horizontal. Both are same. Or? Yeah. Which one? That is full stack. No, we don't have multiple methods. First one. First one. You should see something like this. Total orders by subcategory. Again, same here. Click on that bar width, right click, and set it to 23 percentage. Format data series. Set that gap width now, set it to 23 percentage. So that the thickness of the bar is a little bit like this one. See, I'll show you here. Right click. Format data series. Format data series. Gap width. Set it to 37, 30, 23, whatever you want. How do we sort this data? Every numbers are, bars are, you know, segregated, no?
Sort, sort. Sort, click on more sort options. Then click on descending. Select orders. And uh, add data labels also. Make data labels inside. See, I on more sort option. You have selected subcategory, so you select order. Your number, huh? you have to just uh, right click on this gray buttons. Gray button, uh, right click, hide all three buttons on chart. This one. And remove right click on total, but this one, click on this one, right click and remove. Now close this one, right click, delete. Now increase the. Yes, yeah. uh, no, 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 Tutku numbers yeah. 16 and 32. Now the shade. You are called dummy inside the
Many charts you created so far? <laughs> Only three. Can we create one line chart? Basically, line chart will show for last 12 months, how is the sales? Okay, again, copy paste the same pivot table. Remove subcategory from rows shelf and add order date. Uh, I mean, uh, month of order date, okay? We should see a line chart like this. Go ahead and that gray buttons, remove that gray buttons, right click all, whichever you want to remove, right click, delete. So instead of orders, we want sales, right? That's what they said. The buttons, gray buttons. We see the buttons. No, no, control Z, right click, hide all the buttons. Ah. So instead of uh, orders by one, it is sales by one. No, no, same one only. I just removed orders and added sales from one. Okay. <laughs> Which month has highest sales? Why? Why the sales? Why the sales is high in December? No, no. Where November? December, right? If you are seeing November, then you have put values. May have put orders. Remove orders and put sales. Values may you want sales. So month of order. Some of sales. No, month is fine. In values, shelf may sales you have to add. When sales round, karke, there is one field. You drag that field. Now, question is why the sales is high in December? We don't know. We are working with data. You ask with business people. Okay? Yeah. Probability is seasonal. Yeah. December yeah. is a seasonal month and that's yeah. different. Sometimes we should also learn how to say no. Because this is not my job. My job is to create a chart. I don't know why the sales are high. Now, uh, that's where you know data science came. So what we are doing is we are doing descriptive data analysis. Something which has already happened. We are just showing that information. There is something called prescriptive analysis. I don't know. I have talked about these terms in our session. 
uh, there are different types of analysis predictive analysis prescriptive analysis and descriptive what is prescriptive you go to a doctor you say i have a fever he'll give you a prescription right you take these medicines your fever will come down this is prescriptive before something some event happens you are prescribing some measures so that that will not happen that is a prescriptive and descriptive is something already happened right in this sales, there is sales which has already happened. In that month, the sales has already done. There's some amount of like 97,000. This is a descriptive. So generally, we as data analytics work, we work only on descriptive data. We don't work on anything else. Then there is something called predictive, which means predicting. Now, December, May, this is the sales. Next three months, how my sales would look like. Data scientists will sit and write a model, analyze this data and come up with some regression analysis and say, probability is... 100% it will not happen. Probability. Google will say, right, there is a chance of rain carry an umbrella. That sometimes you carry umbrella, there is no rain. Which means, the probability that, yeah, 95% your sales will go. That is called as predictive data. But just know the difference between these terms. We will just work mostly on descriptive data. Okay? Something which has already happened. Now, all the charts are created. It's time to create a dashboard. That's it. So, if you just remember from beginning of our session, we had order sheet. First option, you went and write formulas. It was time taking, very tedious thing. We immediately switched into the next automation, which is pivot table, drag and drop, create the pivot tables. Then we created the charts. Now, we can't give this to our uh, end user, right? So, go ahead and do this. We may need to make it look a little bit good. That's why we need to create a dashboard. How to create a dashboard? Just click on new sheet again and give the name of this sheet called dashboard. Or you call it as sales overview. Yeah. You should explain four, right? Four. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, did you create a sheet for sales overview? Yes. Yeah. Now, first thing we need to do is click on insert. Uh, I before clicking on it, I'll just show you what we are going to do. It just hold on a second. I'll quickly show you the dashboard. Dashboard. Oh, I don't know if you have seen this dashboard. If you have joined the first session, this is the dashboard now. Yeah. You have to go ahead and create this dashboard now. Okay. Now, first step, what we are going to do is we are going to add this box. Uh, how to add this box? You have to go ahead and click on insert shape. Select the first, uh, the third one next to circle this one and just drag it here. <coughs> Let me know once you have done box. I mean, increase, decrease size, whatever the size you like it, you do it, okay? Change the color, whichever color you like it, you change it to that color. If you like some shadow and all of that, you can do that. Then what? what happened? It's not their option or not what? responding. No, the thing is that still no. running, but it's still. So now we added a shape. How to add numbers? I want to show like here he's showing right sales latest year is 75,000 so I want to show what is the total sales again you go to sheet 3 add one more pivot table
remove all uh, whatever you have added in rose cell. It will tell you sum of sales will be 61,300 and 6,13,982. Ahead and add one table, copy paste. Only change is remove whatever you have in row cell. The answer should be uh, whatever uh, as per your filter. Some numbers you should see. Right? Next to that cell, just say is equal to and just select that cell. Is equal to this one. Just say is equal to this cell. No, nothing here. Here you just remove whatever you have from the row cell. Then now once that is done, go back to your shape, click on the shape, and that formula bar is there. Just type is equal to and select that cell. No, formula bar. Sheet 3 is simple. Is equal to this, this cell. Thanks. Value is same, is it? Yeah. We should see like this. This one, this one now. Can you go to sheet three first? Here, you select the object is equal to. Go to that sheet three and select that. Once selected, just increase the size of it. Set the size to 32. It's not happening. Yeah. Okay. You're selecting the chart, you know. You have added some bracket and all. Bracket and all, this is not there. Then no? anybody needs help? Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Now, only thing which is missing in this KP is the title. You can go to insert, then add a text object, text box. We we'll call this as sales. Done Once you're done, right click all click on all these two objects, sales and these two objects. Right click and group it. There's an option called group, group it. Which means when you drag drop now, that objects will not change. That's okay, and we'll format that later on. But it is showing, right? Mm -hmm. ah, right click. Mm -hmm. Group it there, Give me a minute. Come here and insert. For me, it's not giving anything. Why only it will come to you only? Now, if you want to align, you align it like this. Well, now you right click and group them, okay? Just if somebody who has already grouped it, copy paste. Copy paste to five KPS. Total five KPS should be done. Now that chair is gone, actually. Okay, then no?
Oh, is it? That one is there, huh? Five minutes, so it's done. Then, now, whatever charts we created, just copy paste the charts in our dashboard sheet. Control C, Control V. You should see something like this. Not exact uh, replica, but make sure we have four charts, two charts in one row. Those who have done it, go to view and uncheck all the options. <coughs> Uncheck all the options. This heading, three lines. And the formula. Mm -hmm. Just remove this all grid lines, formula bar. Now it will look like a dashboard. Only thing is our top KPIs, you have to map it with whatever number. Considering we have less time, we have to leave that KPS as is, but complete the chart part. So your dashboard should look like this. Okay. As an assignment, you need to add a slicer. I have already taught how to add slicer. Add a slicer and show it slicer here. When you click on the slicer, you should show automatically. I'll quickly show you how to do it. And you can make a note of this. Once you added slicer, then the most important step is report connection. Select all charts, all pivot tables. Mm -hmm. And then we'll make this vertical. Each slicer on the dashboard? Yeah. Then we'll just add the slicer on the dashboard. If you click on it, just take a look at the screen. I just added slicer. Now, whenever I'm clicking on whichever year, all these charts are also getting filtered. Okay. So I will be sharing this Excel. You can take it as a reference for today's session. Also, I will share you this Excel also. In case in your office, you want to create it, showcase it, you can use this, okay? No, no much difference here. I have used a world map. You can take it as assignment in our data. We have a field called a state. Just drag state and create a map. And anyway, share this workbook also. You can use this. Both you can keep it and you can play around with the data. Okay. So this brings us to the end of our Excel session. Uh, from tomorrow, we are starting Tableau Plus, same time. So Tableau is very easy. So far you are doing a lot of manually typing, editing and all. Tableau is very easy. Just drag, drop. It will create even better dashboard. So you will learn 
better things in Dabbling. Excel, you will come to know why we should not use Excel in when creating dashboard. What is the benefit to come to know? So tomorrow onwards, we will be starting Dabbling. Same time. Okay. So thank you, everyone. So what about this KPI? Hmm. Just cannot change it over the huh. What you have to do is now you added one here, no? bottom. Yeah. Just yeah. add one Except more. Then. Sales, skill, you add profit and map profit, you will show profit the number. Thank mm -hmm. you.